Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up the PS Vita emulator Vita 3K. And um, honestly, it's one of the easiest emulators to set up. It is really simple. So, first of all, this video is not condoning piracy. I assume, you know, you, you know, you legally own the game that you've got and, you know, etc, etc. So, yeah, so let's get down to it. First of all, let's download Vita 3K. This is for Windows. I love videos for Linux and Mac as well because it is supported on all three platforms, which is fantastic. Uh, okay, so first of all, just download. You just want to download a, you know what? I will open up a new window. So you want to download Vita 3K, so Google it or just check out the link in the description. Go to here and click download. It'll take you down. Click the Windows Nightlies, grab from GitHub. You'll know, just download it. I already had it, hence the one there. Next, what I'll recommend is, you know, you go to compatibility and go to compatibility list. And in here, you can see which games, you know, are compatible and, you know, like their performance. So obviously right now, there aren't many that are, you know, playable with no glitches. There's a fair few that have in-game and some that are bootable intro and there's some of those that are like nothing happens so if we go to playable you can just see all the playable ones it's a pretty short list to scroll through but the one i'll be trying is my name in mayo I'm trying this one because i remember playing it you know to get an easy plat plus it is very playable as well so i've already got that so yeah so make sure you got this downloaded once you got that we'll go ahead and this is the game that i've got i'll minimize that for now and I will show you that very soon. So go to wherever your downloads folder is. I'll delete number one. Same thing. So if I right click, extract all, extract. do not take long to extract. And now in here, I'm going to go to this. You can rename this to something like, let me rename it. Rename it Vita 3K, for example. And in here, open Vita3k.exe. And if this pops up, click more info, run anyway, and they load up and just give you some information, close, you need to create a user. So you can change the avatar and you know, you can specify a custom image, change the username. So let's put my name for Han, confirm, okay, you need to log in. You can set automatic user login, which is pretty cool as well. So click that and you just need to click on that and then you'll appear. So I've got a few things I've already appeared because I've already got like a game there. So let me, let me, if I go open preference path. So what I'm going to do, and I'll go one more. I'm going to delete Vita 3K. And let's see if we accidentally delete it. I'll close it and I'll redo all of this again. So you literally see it the way you you know you would. And let's say if I open it up, open up vita 3 kexe more info, run anyway, you know, create a new user. Frahan, confirm, okay, you log in. There we go. So this is how you will see it. And so, so there's a few fit area things that we want to go to. If we go to configuration settings right now, there's no firmware present. And if you click download firmware, it takes you to the PlayStation website and you can just download the latest PS Vita firmware. So if I click that, if you don't download, and I, oh, I always have this issue with PlayStation websites, just right click it, you save link as, and there you go, you'll be able to save it, click save. I've already got it, so I won't be doing that. So I've already got that and we'll install that momentarily and you can, you know, have a look at some of the CPU, GPU stuff. You can, you know, enable Spur V shader as well, you know, you know, bad day, especially if you've been doing stuff like Vulkan and you can change the system. So right now X is or cross is to, you know, sort of trigger a button and circle will go back or you can change it to circle, you know, going forward and X going back, which is more the Japanese way. And I remember this This brings some nostalgia back when I got my PS Vita, that's how it was, because I had the Japanese PS Vita, because I bought it before it came out in the UK. 
And you can go to PS TV mode as well if you want to. I'll leave it as well, that's fine. And you can have a look at these some emulator settings. There's not much here. Except look at it, it's a pretty simple one. And there's some debug settings as well. So let's close that. You can install the firmware, you go to file, install firmware, and like so. I, I always find it hangs at about 70% for a little while. So just you know wait patiently, it always does that for me. We'll have a sip of water while we wait. Okay, you can select this and you'll delete it, or you can just select OK and you won't delete it on its own. So now, to confirm it's installed, you just go to settings and go to core. It appears there. I recommend leaving this as default. You can change experimental, leave it as default. That's the recommendation. And for debug, you can click on that and it'll show you different, you know debug information again you probably won't need that if you need to install a pkg if you don't already have it extracted or a vpk or a zip file you can use this install a license file but you probably won't need to next thing i'll show you obviously you got user management if you want to add another user controls so if you go to keyboard controls i like this this is something i like that usually you have to manually either set you know this controls for keyboard or let's say a controller they're saying uh, that okay we'll by default have a mapping for keyboard but you can have a, a mapping for a controller it's pretty cool that is so if let's say if i click on that and i press you know up it's the up arrow now and but that's it that's all you have to do to map it you can obviously just map it as you see fit click x and if you go to controllers if you have a controller connected, it will appear here. It says connect a controller that is compatible with SDL2, which is a development you know, framework. And I've used that framework before. A lot of controllers are supported. Let's just say that. So you probably be all good to go with that. And honestly, there's not much more to it. I'll say go to open preference path. You'll store your games in UX0 app. You just put them here. You can either copy the folder to here, even install one of the this if you have it like this format, or because I already had it in a different folder. What you can actually do, which is pretty cool, I drag that onto the window. It appears there, but if I close this down now, and you know it went through a bunch of tasks that it was doing, so you can you know see what was going on. Go to File, Open Preference Path, go to UX0, go to App, it, it copies it here. It's not a shortcut, it is a full on copy. So you can do that way, or you can just go to Open Preference Path. And now you just click on it, that's it. Click Start, the game will load up, and you'll hear audio once the game's, uh, once this thing on the menu, you start hearing audio on this game. There you go, and uh, we're getting 60 frames, or 59, I should say. And I know you have to like trigger it, so like X for example. And right now, WASD is for the I think, right analog stick, is it? And no, left analog stick. And X is to tap it. And we're earning trophies as well, which is pretty darn cool. And really, that's it. You can close it. And if you close it like that, it. It does close it all, so just launch it back up. And let me go to my user, click that, and we can go to trophies. And we can see, you know, the trophies that we've unlocked, which is pretty darn cool. So, you know, you have, you know, a trophy system as well. So you can check a content manager settings as well. Again, you know, it's pretty basic, but you can, you know, modify this as well. You can change, you know, the start screen, add an image. You can add a background as well. You can change date and time format, language, and like I said, you have a content manager, so you can you know have a look at the applications that you got, save data, free space. So that's free space on that particular hard drive. And if we go right, we got one message or one notification, and it's because we've got a trophy. We can go to manual. You'll load up the whatever manual it had for that game. 
and you can even do like a little search thing as well which is you know pretty darn cool so that's it i mean there's not much more to it than that that's the ps vita vita 3k emulator i'll be creating more videos on this on how to set it up on mac how to set it up on linux how to set up different game controllers using that sdl2 driver really cool stuff if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group there's a link in the description and check out the emulation channels feel free to post in there and i'll provide a link to you know the things that we use in this video as well so i'll see you then bye bye